student now let us see how we describe a lesion in radiology if you look at it here if a lesion is well defined right at the apex of this maxillary lateral and it has a circumscribed radio opaque border self growing right so this could be a cystic lesion now in this picture there is again a well defined radiolucent lesion at the apex of mandible left second premolar there is no radio opaque border here though slight sclerosis it could be a granuloma while in this one when you see a radiolucent lesion with diffuse irregular border that's a sign more of an abscess diffuse margin invasive process now here you can see the widening of the pdl space very clearly and lamina dura if you can see this wide radio opaque line surrounding the pdl space is thickened now we see different pictures of apical periodontitis here you can look that's a thickening of the lamina dura and widening of the pdl space trauma is a reason for this this is traumatic occlusion where also we can see widening of pdl space and thickening of lamina dura traumatic occlusion a premature contact here is orthodontic treatment cause of apical periodontitis this is just a developing root apices we should not confuse it with widening of pdl space this is also illusion of widening of pdl space this is actually the shadow of the sinus here is a shadow of the canal that is giving the illusion of widening of pdl space here student we can see the mental foramen on a picture while b picture is the lesion in this picture is also a mental foramen and we already discussed in the video before how to distinguish between mental foramen and periapical pathology here this is a periapical granuloma cyst or an abscess small well defined radiolucency is a suggestive of periapical granuloma and periapical granuloma are most frequently occurring in all the pulpal periodontal condition while here if we see this is the radicular cyst where we can see a clear radio opaque border radicular cyst and this one where we see diffused irregular border this is student the abscess tooth is non vital here now we can see this is a apical scar the scar tissue is where the osseous tissue has failed to fill after endo treatment being done this apical radiolucency persisted even after treatment these are the pictures of apical scar if you see also a surgical defect here with osseous tissue after surgery is all the surgical defects with the arrow here you can see the vertical bone loss around the second premolar the tooth was vital here there is also vertical bone loss here producing a periapical radiolucency then we can see the condensing osteitis where actually there is a diffuse radio opacities that are being seen the tooth was non vital here some more pictures of condensing osteitis this is osteosclerosis at the root apices of the first molar the involved tooth is vital here in osteosclerosis you can see the picture some more pictures of osteosclerosis this is some socket sclerosis if you can see here this is a retained root from the mandibular molar extraction that has lead to socket sclerosis retained root again how to distinguish from socket sclerosis so it's a diffuse border that is socket sclerosis while the retained root will have more clear border some more pictures of socket sclerosis here this is osteosclerosis at the apex of mesial root of first molar started from a neutrin canal the tooth here is vital this is the retained root actually where you can see very clear sharp borders of the retained root Now, periapical cemental dysplasia, student, is a very important condition. You will see it in middle-aged Black African females, and you can see the condition can start with radiolucency, with the radio opaque border, multiple periapical radiolucency in the mandible anterior region. Then it will come to the mixed stage, radiolucent radio opacity combined, and then it can become completely radio opaque lesion with the radiolucent borders. The teeth, periapical cemental dysplasia. You can see at the vital teeth mandibular. doesn't require any treatment asymptomatic just observe the condition this is one of the calcified stage of periapical cemental dysplasia we can see some radio opacities now it's a advanced lesion with the radio lucent border this is cementoblastoma starting stage where you see radio lucency the tooth is vital and then it will become radio opaque mixed stage and then finally become radio opaque that's a calcified stage the tooth is again vital here you can see this in the mandibular posterior area like a dense radio opacity with a radio lucent border now the next condition after that this is cemento ossifying fibroma you can see a large unilocular radio lucency which has calcification inside 
in the inferior border of the mandible. Fluid osseous dysplasia when multiple quadrants can have diffuse radiopaque mass with a radiolucent border. You can see on the both the sides of the mandible. FOD, fluid osseous dysplasia. Cotton wool appearance, shaved radiopaque area. It can involve all the four quadrants as I told you bilaterally. Well circumscribed radiopaque masses. The teeth are vital. You can see some more pictures of fluid osseous dysplasia. You can see multiple quadrants are having this radio opacity with the radiolucent border. Now here in this picture, we can see there is a radiographic error where the root apices of the premolar are cut off because the film was placed too close to the teeth in the maxillary arch when using the paralleling technique. In this picture also, we can see we are cutting off the third molar because the positioning of the film was not proper. We put it too far anteriorly, we have to shift it more posteriorly so that we can see this third molar full picture here. Now, this is very dark radiograph. This is called as the high density radiograph because of high MA, high KVP, high exposure time, short source to film distance. If you are using higher developer temperature, right, in the manual radiograph or more developing time, patients who are uh, pediatric patient, we are taking the radiograph without changing the X ray parameters, it can come to a dark radiograph for them. This is a light radiograph, which is the opposite, low MA, low KVP, low exposure time of a manual x-rays, low developing temperature, low developing time, patients with uh, thick muscular, patients with thick jaws, if you are not increasing the x-ray parameters, it can come to a light radiograph for them, low film density. The incorrect vertical angulation, so if you have too much of vertical angulation, students remember it will lead to foreshortening and less vertical angulation will lead to elongation. So, it is just opposite. So if you can see here, this is the elongation right here. This is the normal and this is the shortening. This is the foreshortening because of increased vertical angulation. For the maxillary teeth, we have a positive angulation where the cone is facing towards the floor and for the mandibular teeth, we have a negative angulation where the cone is facing towards the ceiling. This is the elongation because of decreased vertical angulation. You can see elongated roots here. So, here we can see the foreshortening. B is the correct picture here. This is again the elongation we can see clearly. This is film curving, shape distortion due to curving of the film right here at the time of exposure. Now, horizontal angulation if it is improper, student, it leads to overlapping of the images. You can see overlapping. It is difficult for you to see interproximal caries if there is an overlapping. Now, this is a cone cut, student very important. Cone cut caused by improper alignment of PID, position indicating device with a film packet. The cone of radiation did not cover the whole area of interest, right? This is the portion where the film was not exposed to X ray. This is the cone cut that we have here, right here. This is another picture of the cone cut, improper alignment of rectangular cone PID here with the film packet. This is the bending of the film, you can see these are the bend marks at the corners that has created break in the emulsion. This is again a bent film which was crimped into the slot of the bite block, small crescent shape images due to crimping. You can see this is blurring, looks blurred, not unclear. So this is due to patient moving or tube head moving during the exposure. This is the double images, if you can look at it clearly, the film was exposed twice resulting in a double image, also double exposure. Now, this is student called as the herringbone effect, where the film was exposed from the non-exposed surface. So, if the lead foil backing is facing the x-rays, it can lead to this herringbone effect, the tire track pattern. You can look at the picture here closely. There is also honeycomb effect. You can see the embossed pattern. Whatever pattern you have on the lead foil, it will be seen on the x-ray. When the film was exposed from the non-exposed surface, so low density radiograph is seen. Upper mesial corner plays occlusally to the contralateral maxillary posterior teeth. The clear film can happen if you do not expose the film. You place it in fixer before the developer or you put it in a fixer for several days before developing. This is the dark film, completely black after processing, film exposed to light before processing. This is the panel student which can uh, expose to a light to a faulty acid joint and therefore turn black. This is the orange peel appearance cause of sudden extreme changes in the temperature. These are some developer artifacts you can see in the manual imaging that are splashed on the tabletop, contaminated tabletop. This is a fixer artifact. You can see these white spots which clear the undeveloped silver bromide crystals of the film emulsion. 
Now, these are the developer cutoff and the fixer cutoff. This is a developer cutoff in the manual imaging when you are not properly dipping it in the developer solution. And this is students the fixer cutoff when the film is not dipped properly in the fixer solution. This is the fogging of the film using the film beyond the expiration date, inadequately protected from scattered x-ray, there is a fogging, contaminated or exhausted solution, dark round, safe light is not good, it is too bright, too long exposure, light leaks in the dark room. So this tree-like marking student, this is a static electricity mark that can be seen on the panoramic radiograph. If you look at it closely, it is generated by friction if you do a rapid removal of the wrapper from the film on the intensifying screen into the cassette. 